plays. It's the second most played, but still, I am surprised that picks feel threatened by that. Of course, it's not a champion that Duinbi plays himself, so I do understand. I would expect the Volibear pick here because Volibear has just been our, our standout jungle pick in the LPL. Epix is one of the teams that have gone towards it the least. We've actually only seen Tien play it four times, but nice to see they do still val value that pick. Yeah, that Caitlyn getting banned as well. It's something that's been creeping up in ban priority, but over to DMO, so they're gonna lock themselves in. They set it can be a flex pick. We're generally seeing it in the jungle role these days though. And they're looking to get something for Shubin as well. His most played was that Ash, but obviously that's been banned. And then we're moving into things like the Aphelios, the Ezreal, that everybody in the league is familiar with. The thing that's surprising about DMO is Xiaopeng actually hasn't played any set jungle. It is Yui's most played champion though, so when DMO lock in set, I do expect it to go towards the bot lane. So now them locking in the Kalista, having a very strong, you know, very aggressive fighting 2v2 in the bot lane. LWX was hovering the Draven there. For anyone that doesn't know at home, Draven known as kind of the Kalista counter lane because you want to be just as aggressive, but you just hit a whole lot harder. I don't expect him to lock that one in, but it would be cool. Yep, and Aphelios has been a pick that most teams tend to stay away from. We have seen teams going towards other things, even like the bar is still coming on this patch and going towards the lethal tempo on hit route. But LWX has been one of our players who has played Sun. He's actually played it four times this split, so FPX now signaling they're gonna play more solo lane and <laughs> topside centric route, which sounds pretty strange to say. Especially with uh, Gimgun in the top lane as well. Maybe learning some strategies with Khan in the roster and then they're going to be applying them with Gimgun there as well. But we do have the Nautilus. Don't get too excited, guys. It's probably for Chris as opposed to doing B. We do still have the Syndra open, which has been Twyla's most played. And we said, hey, that is in the discussion with those champions that are high priority here in the LPL. We don't typically talk about hovers, but I do want to highlight, Xiao Pong was the first jungler in the LPL to play this. He actually picked this one up against RNG. Wasn't a win but still it is there and available for Xiaopong. It's not looked convincing for any team just yet. We've seen it twice, we've seen it lose twice, and we are gonna see Yui bringing up the Leona once again. So something very standard in that bottom lane. You mentioned the set has very regularly gone towards Yui, but in terms of style, the Leona is set very similar to Yep, they definitely work, you know, in similar veins, definitely both very aggressive, both engage heavy, but this will be our first time seeing Xiaopong on the set if it gets brought to the jungle. Even top lane, if they decide to put it there, we haven't seen Shalisa play it all split long. So now, bans towards the mid lane here from DMO. Is they're gonna remove the Galio from Doon B. Obviously, we all know Doon B for the Karma, for the Galio, for the Rumble especially this split. But the Silas has been his highest priority, at least recently. Yeah, and it's still going to be left open, so I'm wondering if DMO are just going to go for a mid lane pick on four. We've already highlighted the Syndra is still left open. We do know that Twyla is one of our... has a bit of a stranger champion pool, right? He's willing to pull out things like the Cassiopeia and the Zillion, so that's always an option if they do want to leave that counter pick for Twyla, but when we have something like the Syndra, which is just one of the strongest champions in the meta, I don't know why you would look over it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Twyla has got eight Syndra picks so far. This split as well, it's easily his most played. He's also got things like the Corky there if he wants to just play it safe against Doom B and doesn't want to go for anything too crazy. But I mean, Syndra is pretty safe of a pick in of itself. So we'll see where FBX are going to go with this final ban. It is going to be the Wukong. So very much focusing away Chalitza. And his top three champions have all been removed. And now we're getting into the fringe picks, which is yeah, so now we could potentially see a Renekton pick coming out for DMO. We got to remember that the set is always there as a potential flex. If Xiaopeng just wants to go back to comfort and pick up something like a Lee Sin, which has obviously been his standout champ. There's also things like the Trundle still open, things like the Graves as well, if they did want to go for a different jungler. But they're going to lock in for the top lane here. Renekton for Chalitza. It is his fourth mode play most played, but he has only played two individual games over this split. So yeah. very much not the, the standard for DMO. Now I wonder if FPX will go towards the Silas that you talked about, because then you do have this aggressive aggressive skirmishing like 2v2 with the Volley Bear and the Silas. You have the Dawning Shadows coming out from the center to support those invades around the map. And when we look over to the side of FPX, you could already see a bit of a hover well, there. Gimgoon has been loving the Gangplank. He's played it three times already. They split. It's great into Renekton. Feels like the perfect pick right here, but Apparently not. And we get the famous Doom Rise, right? This is a champion that Doom loves. It's one of his pocket picks. He, he will always pull it out in any situation. We saw in spring playoffs and go back to it time and time again. And then paired with another famous champion for FPX, yeah. the Lee Sin for Tien. I was expecting that Volibear to be going over to Tien. It's only been played one time by Gimgoon, but it is going to be the Volibear in the top lane. 
And now you're talking about signature picks, you're talking about the special picks. We could well see Twyla's Cassiopeia on top of it. Yep, and it's always been a matchup that Cassiopeia players have favored into the rise. So we're getting a bit of a throwback back to like season eight, early season nine for these meta mid laners. And the Do NB1 is always nice to see. We said, hey, this is going to be more of a solo lane focused game. Then we got to remember about the rise to see a lot more of a like split push and side lane oriented champion rather than something that looks for these team fights, but still, MPX have a strong front line in the Nautilus, in the Volley Bear. They're gonna have Senna, who's gonna scale up, deal a lot of DPS later on in the game. And then Ryze has a ton of low cooldown, so does also put out a ton of DPS himself. Just gonna be a bit more, gonna be more conscious of how you're positioning these fights. One of the really interesting things is, despite the fact that obviously Doombi is known for his Ryze, it's a big pick for him. This is the first time he'll be playing it this entire split, so, I, I'm not going to say he's going to be rusty. I don't expect him to not perform on it, but certainly it's not been a champion that's been in the meta as of recently. So I'm curious what it's going to look like here today. And especially with the center in the bottom lane, FBX maybe just looking towards scaling. Well, we got to remember that when they did bring it back in playoffs, it was it was a complete swap from the style they played in spring regular season. And that's when they got 3-0'd by JDG. So it wasn't a strategy that particularly panned out. And we look at what DMO picked up as well, right? They have very strong team fighting as well. They have scaling elements in the Cassiopeia at least. So if FPX's comp does just want to run in, which obviously that's what's suited for running forward, Twilight's going to have a great time in these fights. It's worth mentioning as well that DMO around that mid game are going to hit like a truck with a Renekton in the top side with the Callista down in the bottom lane as well for Shubin. They would love to be fighting around those dragons and around the mid game. Uh, I was kind of expecting Gyos. <laughs> I was kind of excited, but... They always tell me if there's Gyos. Oh, do they? Yeah. They never tell me if there's Gyos, so... But I do like the point no you're making Gios. about the mid game because to me that definitely feels like DMO's strongest point. When I look at how the early games work out, we at least look at how lanes interact with jungle and it definitely feels like Tien will have more setup, right? You have a bit of lockdown coming in from the rise if he can you know, get off the, the Spell Flux, then hit the W to get the root. You have some setup in bot lane coming in from the Nautilus, but we don't really expect a lot of fighting to be around there up against the Callista. And then Volley Bear, always a strong, you know, fighting 2v2 skirmishing top laner. So we could see Tien impact these lanes early on, but especially around that one item mark, or even around when Dragon just first comes up, we can see DMO use their bot lane pressure and try to force these skirmishes where the Callista and the Set Renekton are gonna be extremely strong. It's kind of interesting to me, at the top side of the map here, that Gimgoon opted into the Volley Bear because Renekton was one of the first champions that we saw come through as an answer to this Volley Bear in the top lane. For, for those of you that weren't watching a few weeks ago, when Volley Bear first came out, the reworked version, we saw it pretty much exclusively in the top lane in the LPL while it was played in the jungle elsewhere. Now we're seeing it a lot more in the jungle. I was expecting it to go to Tian because Renekton was that answer. Yeah, me too. And the thing is, we have seen it be able to do quite well in the early levels. We've also seen him opt for the press the attack. So going to do much better in short trades than Chalisa, who has the conquer. But we've seen, especially once Chalisa can hit that level 6 mark, maybe come back with something like a phage. That's when Renekton really starts shining in that matchup. Nice play here from Twyla already to zone to and be away from the wave. Going to be able to just try and deny as much CS as possible. And that's important when you're playing against the Ryze because Ryze is going to look great later on into the game. But while you have the opportunity before he gets his tier, before he can spam his spells, get some damage down. And that's why we did see him start with the Mana Crystal because Ryze really struggles with mana issues early on. So getting that tier as fast as possible really mitigate a lot of that. The early game struggle with waves. So I believe what the graphic is saying basically is if FPX can get a win today, they're going to be on nine wins. EDG are already on eight losses. So if FPX does win, EDG are out of the playoff picture. I can't read Chinese. I do know what the standings look like, though. Shame on you, Munchables. You've lived here for how many months and you still can't read Chinese? I know. It's embarrassing, honestly. It's only the most difficult to learn language on the planet. Really interesting that Yui chooses to shadow mid-level two. I mean, Twyla is pushed up, so maybe like anticipating that Tian can look for a gank, and even Xiaopeng wouldn't have been too far off if they could stall some time, but does get a ward down, so they are going to spot out Tian if he does look for a player on mid lane. And I am curious, I mean, you mentioned Tian looking for plays around the map. 
I'm curious if he will at all, honestly, because obviously he's on the Lee Sin, which can be quite aggressive as Lee Sin, but look at the lanes that he has, right? The Volibear, not going to do amazingly into the Renekton, although that is an option for them. But Rise in the mid lane and Center in the bottom side, these are not lanes that you really want to be ganking for. You want to just leave them alone to farm. Yeah, the thing about the Rise we highlighted, at least you do have some CC, some lockdown. Ooh. Oh, nicely done there, Tian. Sneaks in and grabs himself the Scuttlecrab. And we were talking about this top lane matchup. It is not going how I was expecting. Well, remember we talked about in the very early levels, Volibear is fine. And this is why I remember... Ooh. Oh my goodness, no way. Goon! One auto away. He was on like 10 HP. Game Goon's playing great. We also need to remember... Ooh. So I Shop, think, Shop just, I just thought, I, I thought that was Tian for a me too, me second too. there. But, uh, you know, going back to the point, I remember when this matchup came out at first, me and you were actually casting it. We came yeah. in saying, okay, well, Renekton is going to be an answer. Then we'd constantly see the Volibear solo kill the Renekton early on. And again, in the first few levels, levels it's strong. With the rune choice, it is strong. It won't be about until that, you know, level six mark where we really start seeing the Renekton be able to come out ahead in extended trade, stack up that Conqueror. But we also need to remember Chalitza is one of our weakest top laners in the LPL. I think that's one of the things to bear in mind is that we saw Volibear win this matchup a few times. This is not like a hard counter. This is like an answer. You still have to know the matchup to be able to pull it off. One thing that will help is a second Doran's Blade that Chalitza has gone for there. He yeah. has around the bottom side, though. Actually, Hook goes through onto Yui. Obviously, he's tanky. How tanky is he, though? The route is going to go wide. It should mean that Yui can flash away to safety. Still, that was a nice side step coming out from Yui, making sure yeah. that he, you know, potentially didn't go down. And really creative gank coming from Tien. They obviously pinged out the ward. Oh, Ooh. geez. That was a good effort, though. That was. That was close. Tien read him, though. Figured out what was going on, was going to be able to survive off of that one. And decides that now is the moment to start the dragon. Off. Look at Chalitza, though. Chalitza has roamed down to mid. So Demo with five members on this side of the map. All right, in we go. Facebreaker onto two, but Yui misses the Zenith Blade. LWX flashing out of the pit. Demo have taken control, but everybody's arriving from FPX. The surrounding from both sides here is crisp. Look at start the fight. Steps in onto everyone. They have to start keeping him safe, and he flashes out. But Chilitza chases him down. Now Tian answers one kill of zone and has to jump away from the fray. Kim Goon flashes out to safety. Doing B doing some good damage, but it's not quite enough. One for one so far. But importantly, Xiaofeng Dark. Yeah, exactly. So now FPX potentially could be the one to... Ah, actually, I didn't notice how low Tian is. Tian's going to have to reset as well, but... I thought things looked really dicey for FPX because LWX had to burn both summoners so early on in the fight to where we look at Shubin. Shubin even still has his flash, but still, FPX did a great job of kind of like kiting and skirting around the fight, not fully committing, allowing LWX to deal all the damage necessary. And one for one overall, feels fine for FPX. We highlighted, do have the rise and do have the Senna. Yeah, that's one of the things that is always hilarious to me. Whenever I watch FPX, I'm like, oh, well, they've got some scaling aspects to their composition. They probably want to forego some of these early dragon fights. No, 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 no. This is FPX. They're going to fight. They're going to skirmish with you. And we do got to remember, right? They do, ooh. Hang on, Kim Goon's in trouble here. He's found himself in a 2v1, doesn't have flash available, and he's running towards the wrong tower. They're gonna TP into the play, and Kim Goon survived long enough to pull this off. The Haymaker's not enough, and somehow FPX pulled that off. A great read by FPX, right? Because this is one of the strengths that Rise does have over Cassiopeia. Obviously, much easier to react to side lane plays with that Realm Warp available. Gonna lose out some CS in the mid lane, but hey, you know, you just got another kill onto Tien. He's now going to start snowballing across the map. Gimgoon did go down. And Shalitz at least missed, looked like, two or three CS of EXP. So not going to be too bad. But now the wave is going to push back to Gimgoon, which can be even better. Maybe we can see now Tien start setting up a gank for topside. Yeah, Tien got himself two kills already this game as well, importantly. And when we're talking about the early game strengths that FPX have, Lee Sin represents a lot of that early game strength. So him having the kills, not too shabby at all for them. So now the question is, what does FPX do next? Because we we set it up as a scaling composition, but from what we've seen so far, they are not going to rest on their laurels. Well, and the thing we need to remember as well, especially now that Ryze has picked up both the tier and also has two mana crystals on top of that, is it shores up a lot of his weakness in the early game in the sense of he's going to pr pretty much be able to blindly clear the wave now and be able to at least react and support Tien in a lot of these skirmishes. Jalitza is not having a fun time in this matchup. This is meant to be a good matchup for Renekton, but it is not looking good right now. Gimkun's so far ahead with that mage, and you can see it in these trades. Twilo at least going to grab himself 
that blue buff. And you can see there is a pretty significant CS lead in the mid lane in favor of Twyla, but that's because Doom B's been around the map roaming. So. And exactly, this is what we talked about just now with the mana coming out, right? He's gonna be able to just clear these waves, support Tien in making these decisions. We do see that Demo obviously see this because they have the control ward, and they're actually posturing to look for the fight. Xiaopeng moving in. Doombi gonna try and just zone him away, but he's in for the smite fight. Tian gets it and flashes out over the wall. Dawning Shadow across the team. Shubin gets out with his life, and Yue should get away as well. Twyla with the grounding to keep him safe. And we did see how Shubin got so low. I'm actually surprised because it looks like FPX just came out ahead in the straight 2v2. FPX pick up the objective, they force DMO back, and that feels like a nice win for FPX. It feels like Senna is a lot stronger than uh, she was previously. Obviously with the Fasting Senna, my mentality towards this champion has been very slow in the early game, scaling up. But the more I'm watching with the Farming Senna again, the more it feels like well, she has a lot of presence in the lane. When this champion switched back to this mode, I actually talked to some teams about it. I'm like, hey, wh wh why are we getting the swap? And that was the reason. They're like, hey, with a lot of AD carry nerfs coming through, there aren't a lot of things that feel strong enough in lane to contest some other champions. So being able to get these items done faster and be able to contest in early laning phase and in some early skirmishes feels much better. I mean, just think back to the lethality version, right, that we saw while it was farming as well. It was insane damage, even in the early stages of the game. And obviously we have seen scaling iterations with the IE and whatnot. Now we're seeing this kind of hybrid where you go for the Mana Moon, you go for things like the Black Cleaver as yeah. well. Yeah. That old version definitely felt like a like strong early laning champion that had like a bit of a trough in the mid game once people started getting armor to deal with your lethality. But obviously the more souls you did stack up, you would come on insanely strong in the late game. It's interesting to see the evolution of that champion, but Chalitza is going to find himself the 1v1. He's but, forcing uh, heavy two. Actually, no, this isn't a 1v1. He's found nothing. All he's found himself is in trouble right now because Chilis is stunned, and that means the Sonic Wave can go through. Tian, now with a hat trick, but get, that's going to be Xiaofeng with two stuns in. Face Breaker back into the play, or Showstopper for that matter. Tian kicks one out, gets over. That was beautiful from, from Tian. Just about gets away with his life as well. And this is what I was going to say. It actually makes sense that Chalitza was trading. His, his whole team was on top side to where LWX was still in the bot lane. Just getting a bit too far ahead of himself, but still Demo there to answer. And Demo should be able to pick up this Herald. Really nicely done here from Demo. But FBX still hovering around. I don't think they're going to contest in the end. Tian's going to finish off his recall. And that is going to be Xiaopeng grabbing that. But importantly as well, Xiaopeng has been looking pretty good on this set during these plays. And like we said, this is his first time picking up this champion this split, so definitely unfamiliar territory for him. Now it's going to be interesting to see where he chooses to drop this Herald. We always guess it's going to be the mid lane, at least I always guess it will be. I think that's probably the best place, unless you can outright drop a tower on one of your side lanes, you know, if you already have gotten one or two plates down. And they actually already have a plate in the mid lane from all the times that Twilight's been left alone with that turret. Yeah, I mean, Cassiopeia has no issues shoving in the wave. We can see now, obviously, that the top laners have decided to shift to become bot laners here, which is a bit of a weird one since it's Dragon up next in two minutes and there is no Rift. It makes sense because both bot lanes were already on top side, so it just made sense in that moment to send your top laners down so your AD carries aren't losing out on, you know, gold in the XP. I do expect both bot lanes to clear and swap back. We already see Liston Leona potentially heading towards mid, but... Actually, Shubin going back topside. Yeah, so they're just going to commit to it for now, at least the lane swap towards the top side. The big question that it opens up for me is with this Infernal Drake coming up next, who has the advantage? Because between these two top laners, I'm starting to lean towards Kim Goon here. I agree, and especially with the advantage onto Tien. Despite the, again, not really trough, but we look at Doombi's items, right? Doombi doesn't have any combat stats, just does have a bunch of HP, mana, bit of resistances. Technically, well, mana is a combat stat. For true, Rise. you're right. It is a bit of a it is a combat stat for Rise. But point is, I feel like Tien really is going to be the difference maker in this fight. Where I expect FPX to opt into a dragon fight. I mean, we could look at literally any composition, and I would expect FPX to opt into a dragon fight. It's kind of just the way that this team seems to function, especially with doing B usually on things like that Galio, but even with this Rise, he doesn't play it slow. He doesn't play it for the scaler. Yeah, we see actually being threatened right now by DMO. Good respect here from Doombi. Realizes something's going on, flashes away. But great from D from uh, DMO here to set up a play. They're going to get the Herald down in the mid lane. They might be able to finish this tower off, but with Tian off on the side, DMO going to respect the fact that they could have stepped a little too far. 
Pippin, we see Tien already in the rivers. Give it Ooh. Ah, uh, no. They haven't stepped too far. They want this fight. Tien's going to dash over the wall as Gimgu makes his way over to the play as well. In they go, Tien. On to Xiao Peng. Twilight going to be able to defer it. Chalitza just finished his Black Cleaver. Yes, he he could join the fight at any moment. That could be a huge momentum shift for the side of DMO. And we already talked about Renekton in these dragon fights. This is his ideal scenario. Gets that Dominus up, stacking up Black Cleaver on everyone. Yeah, and we do see there is no Fate's Call coming out from Shubin, so that can be a bit dicey, but do be steeping in, and FPX do want to contest. They're going to go for this one. UA is there. do be going to shove this wave out in the bottom side first so he can move over, and at least there'll be some minions lost from the side of DMO, but they're not going anywhere either. They're moving over from the mid lane. Do you have a bit of a flank going on for FPX here? We got to see if Tian and Gimgun can get on top of Twilight and Shubin, as we talked about. Xiaofeng Hex flashes forward, bit of damage on towards FPX from this dragon. This is going to be a 50-50 smite, I could just feel it here. Chalisa onto the dragon as Chris gets in on the back line. In goes Gimgu, but he's stunned and just burst down with a showstopper onto the back line. Xiaofeng looks fantastic this game. UA jumps in as well, and DMO find the perfect fight. And FPX almost got on top of Twyla and Shubin, but Twyla coming out with the perfect ultimate, making sure Gimgu doesn't provide any threat, then the showstopper coming out from Xiaopong, as you highlighted, looking great. And, I mean, we already talked about the FPX shouldn't necessarily want to look for these early dragon fights. It just feels like with the advantage they got, they feel comfortable doing it. It was execution heavy on how they'd be able to come out ahead. Dino executed better. And, like, ultimately, they've got things like Renekton, mm -hmm. things like this Callista that love to fight in this scenario, but Twyla's all especially denying the play from FPS. Exactly. Even the dredge line missing for Chris felt massive, right? You, if you can hit that dredge line, if you can then combo that in with Gimgun jumping as well, maybe Tien finding her out on top of the carries, Twyla and Shubin were both just standing by themselves. Like, it was, it was a great angle. I can understand how they were looking for that fight, but DMO playing it better, DMO being on better spikes, and now we even see Rod of Ages actually coming out for both mid laners. Yeah, we're going to have a bit of scaling. Let's take another look from Xiaopeng's perspective, because I feel like he was the MVP. Here. Yep, we did see Dredge Line Mish, and there is that Twilight Ultimate coming in strong. We do see Xiaopeng is able to reposition to get him going into the rest of the members, and now Crisp is left awkwardly in the middle of the team, because, I mean, FPX did full-on commit to that fight. And now, DMO looking like they're in a solid position, 1k gold beat. Feels fantastic for DMO, and... They're obviously, they've drafted the composition that does want to be ahead. So now the onus is on them to keep the ball rolling. No Drake for another three and a half minutes. But that Herald will be coming up shortly. You can see Twyla moving up to the top side here to clear the wave. But Shubin and Yui already on the correct side of the map. And Teleport is available for both top laners. A thing I want us to keep our attention on too is in four minutes when Baron comes up. Because not only Callista, but Cassiopeia too, right? These two champions burn Baron so fast. So some kind of cheeky Baron play can definitely come out from DMO, or even one small pick onto TN after the 20 minute mark equals Baron for DMO's composition. And Tien has already been caught out of position a couple of times this game. Fate's Cole used very defensively here. Xiao Pong. Yui's gonna go back in, gets a nice little bit of a siege, siege chain in here. Xiao Pong steps into the back line, showstopper only onto one target, but it's crisp and he's getting burst down by everybody. The Haymaker comes in to finish that kill off, and now suddenly we find ourselves a DMO getting themselves one kill, but their health bars are low, and they might be forced away from the tower anyway. Yep, Epic's are gonna threaten. Twyla's still in the top lane, by the way. He yeah. just never was part of any of this. Yeah, so they're gonna end up trading, and ultimately DMO still picked up one kill in the mid lane. Ooh, Tien might be too far. Tien is trying to find himself a kill onto Chalitza, chasing this one through. He's still on full health, but the Realm Warp in. FPX are making plays around the map, as they always do. And that was so smart, right? We see it. It kind of looks like Tien's over-aggressing. Looks like Tien's the one getting caught out. Great Realm Warp coming from Duinbi to actually sandwich the members of DMO between their two sides, and they pick up a bunch more kills. And this is why we look at FPX with this rise, right? The Realm Warp just creates so many creative opportunities to, you know, force numbers advantages you know, get pressure yeah. in side lane, just so many plays available. So I have a question for you, Lyric. Was that on purpose? Is that a bait from Tian being like, oh, I'm out of position, and then they realm warp in to force the play? I honestly feel like it is. I just can't imagine him going that deep, just thinking like, oh, well, the other members of Devo can, of course, come here first. We do see this play. I was already looking at the position of Xiao Peng. Looked phenomenal. He was definitely going to find a, a good showstopper coming in. The members of MPX do tunnel down to bot side, which is good for them, but still, they do catch out Chris. They have the members here, they have the damage to take it down. Yeah, nice little pick to start the play off. 
The real play, though, is what happened afterwards. So keep your eyes on Tian here. After they go for the tower, he somewhat oversteps, but it was all just a, it was all a con. It definitely was, because again, he knew that Demo would be able to follow first. They forced them out, they used the Realm Orb in. And actually, on the left side of our screen right now, we do see the Demo are picking up Rift Herald, which is nice. We talked about, hey, these two champions do so well at burning down these neutral monsters. Epic monsters, as they are called. They're pretty epic, dude. Yes, they are. <laughs> so let's take stock of where we're at in the game right now, because gold is almost exactly even, but Chalitza, he cannot get back to his tower here. Slice and dice over, but the rest of the squad's moved in. Rune Prism is there. Chalitza, I mean, I was going to say he overstepped. He barely left his tower. Yeah, that was just, you know, nice play coming out from FTX. Obviously, they have pressure through bot lane right now with Gimboon pushing out, but hey, DMO are looking mid. <laughs> They're like, all right, if you guys are going to make a play out to our top laner in the bot side, well, we've got a Rift out. So we'll take your mid tier Ooh. too. Tian is going to try and find this flank. It is a 4v5. Duenby doesn't have Realm Warp yet, but he has TP. It's going to be a 4v5 now. The TP's come on through. Xiaopeng doing some work to CC people. Gets the shield out of the Haymaker. Needs to get over to his team. But Gimgoon trying to make his way in. Flash for the bear slab. And Tian grabs yet another kill. UA pulled in, but the fate's called to get him to safety. Twyla now the target. Does still have the petrifying gaze. We'll see if he can get a big pull off. Tian shut down here with Twyla grabbing a whole bunch of gold there for himself. to be having to back away. So it's going to be one for one, jungler for jungler here. I mean, that feels great for the side of DMO, right? Because DMO were the ones caught, caught out in the open. Five men versus four. FPX try, but great W coming out from Twyla. And worth mentioning, Tian, I didn't see how big his bounty was, but he was 5-0-2 when he died. That is a lot of gold that Twyla just grabbed for himself. And picking up another dragon. Actually, the oh, Rift Herald charge got off in the mid lane. So DMO actually feeling pretty good after that play. Feeling yeah, great. Fantastic. They got themselves a Cloud Drake as well, which they're a little bit sad that it's going to be Cloud Soul this game. They could have done with an Infernal Soul, could have done with even an Ocean Soul that could have been the option here. But ultimately, if you're DMO, you're against FPX here, having these kinds of little fights are definitely going to favor you. However, we keep talking about how DMO have this mid-game composition. We're getting towards the end of the mid-game here, and they're not ahead. I mean, I feel like it's going to, we're going to get to a point where hopefully, I'm going to assume for DMO, we get some kind of like massive skirmish for Baron where, you know, that's kind of where all their all their eggs are in that basket. We are seeing, right, we expect Junby to keep scaling up, going to be a threat in the side lane. Epic's doing a great job of playing around that right now, keeping this two-man core hovering while LWX just catches waves in mid. So let's actually recap with the carries as well, down in the bottom side, because as you mentioned, LWX over in the mid lane here. We were talking about center builds earlier on in the day. This is going to be the Black Cleaver build that we've been seeing more recently with the Glacial Augment, with the Mana Moon stacking up as well. On the other side, Shubin is falling pretty significantly behind, despite the fact that obviously they're going to be on a similar amount of gold here. The items are much cheaper for LWX. Yep, that is one of the things about Senna and just <laughs> Champions that could build things like Man Immune, even Lethality, you know, if yeah. he doesn't want to index into that, is. Feels oh, 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 like. too strong, man. Oh, it, oh, is so I cheap. Mean, like, Serrated Dirt compared to BF Sword, like, it just feels too strong. It feels more impactful than a BF Sword yes. in a lot of scenarios, and it's 200 gold cheaper somehow. But. One thing I will say is BF Sword scales a lot better into the latest. It's kind of funny we're talking about these two items because we actually don't have a Neither of them are in the game <laughs> right now. Neither of them are in the game, but yeah, that's true. Hey, we're just airing our grievances because we're, we're allowed to do that. As somebody who's built a lot of lethality items over the years, over the years, over however long lethality items have been out, um, they are definitely too strong in my opinion, especially in solo queue. In a team environment, not so much because you can outscale it, you can play for the late game. In solo queue, you don't really get to just play for the late game. It's true. Right when now, Zoe's running it down all game, there's not a lot you can do about that. Hey, but when FPX is doing Baron, what can DMO do about this? Uh, well, they don't even seem to be aware that it's happening, so and, not a whole lot right now. We here. talked about DMO having the cop that can go for this play. Rise is also a, a DPS mage as well. Does Baron extremely fast. Well, and not extremely fast. Kim Goon is playing distraction on the bottom side of the map right now. Chalitza and Xiaopong have bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. The Scryer's orb comes out, but it's way too little and it's way too late. I honestly can't believe we just had FPX what just ha force a two man Baron. Nothing happened for Demo, this. Demo, no idea. Like, absolutely nothing happened for them to really set this up, aside from Gim Goon was like, hey, come and gank me. 
and this is where Doombee's really going to thrive, right? He's on the rise. He wants to be pushed in on the side lane. No one's going to be able to really answer him. They're going to have to commit multiple members to where that FPX can win out on the opposite side of the map. But I expect Tien to just keep shadowing Doombee, eventually look for these picks onto Twyla. The really funny thing to me is that this this is one of those barons where FPX are not in a position where they can really start to siege hard and, and push for a win here. Like, we're still at an even state, but this is one of those barons that on paper just gives you one and a half thousand gold. Straight up, this is just, even if they get no towers off the back of it, it's just a gold advantage. Fantastic. It's going to be interesting to see again how they play around side lanes. We talked about Tien hovering for Doombi. That looks like the play they're going to make. And Twyla... If they had known he was here, Doombi had the Realm Warp, they could have looked for a play, but obviously was in Fog of War. Oh, they're still going to go for it. He's not in Fog of War anymore, and the Realm Warp comes on through. Tian is going to be on that one. He's going to look for the kick. Nice dodge on the Petrifying Gaze, but now he could be the one. In trouble, Jalitza gets the stun out of the TP. Nice answer from DMO. Yeah, good response. They find the kick. Oh! Oh, flash out as well, but Crisp dodges the face breaker. That was a smooth as butter blast going right there. That was nice, and this is what we talked about, right? Demo commit on one side. Well, guess what? FPX can push their advantage on the other, so still going to pick up a tower for Gimgu and increase this gold lead. And Dragon's coming up in 44 seconds. FPX should be the team that have pressure to pick that one up. I have to say, coming into this series, I was not expecting it to be this close. I was not expecting DMO to be able to answer in the ways that they have. And sure, they lose a tower here, but the fact that they are answering the plays that FPX are making around the map is fantastic. Yeah, and we, we see here, you already talked about, you know, nice job not getting hit by that pitcher by Gaze, but still, not a good position. Already half HP, Xiaopeng coming out with the Chilling Smite. Chilisa TP's in to get the kill. This was also really interesting where, like you said, Chris dodging out on the face breaker. Starts with the dredge line, flashes away, and just very smooth blast cone, like you said. Cool guys, don't look at explosions as they zip over the wall. Now Dragon once again, DMO, they would love to grab this for themselves. If they can get themselves that Cloud Soul, that's their way to win this game, really. If they can make that Elder Dragon spawn, find ways to grab that, they're just going to burn this dragon down and I'm going to be able to smite it away. Oh. Tian went in way too late for the smite. Now there's a stun onto Crisp as well. This is the snowball that they need. Dawning Shadow across the team, but Chris pulls himself to safety here. Yui with the face call gets himself out. And it looks like the rest of the squad just going to retreat. Gibbon has up. ultimate. That he does. Do it, B is not waiting for someone else to engage. He's going in on the machine gun rise. Jilitsa stuns him up and Shubin will survive for now. As Twyla looking to clear up the rest of FBX. LWX flashes away as Doombi gets out with his life as well. Double kill for Twyla. And they're looking for Gimgoon, but he flashes in to finish the kill. Jilitsa stuns up the bear, but Gimgoon is absolutely monstrous at this point in the game. Gets himself a double, and he's looking for a third one as well. Shubin has nothing he can do about it. The Realm Warp comes in. Doombi grabs the kill, and now Shubin realizes he's stuck around way too long. Gimgoon wants that triple, slaps him down and grabs the kill. And it looked good at first, but ultimately Demo end up acing, I mean FPX, I'm sorry, end up acing the side of DMO. That's why we highlighted how much more comfortable FPX is as a team when Gimgoon is back on the roster. Who says Khan is the carry top lane and this guy is carrying the team fights right now? And you know, starting off, I actually don't understand how Epix didn't have control for that dragon because they still had Baron up, right? But no waves were pushed out for FPX. So, you know, no waves were pushed out. Demo can easily just walk into dragon, take that one up. Tien gets a bit too aggressive as we're going to see here. Now I want to keep my eyes on Gintu because we do see the Leona ultimate coming out and catching Chris. And like you highlighted, the Senna actually hits decently hard at this point in the game. DMO kind of disengaging. Surprisingly, Gimgu doesn't engage with his ultimate. Doombi is the one that flashes over. You said the machine gun rise coming out. Isn't able to get the damage off onto Shubin to finish him off. Is forced back. And then Twyla aggressively going forward. Just sets up Gimgu so much room to deal all this damage. I mean, Twyla saw the miracle play. He did get two kills for himself, but this top laner is monstrous at this point. There was no one able to protect Twyla. And then Gimgoon could just run rampant. Like, the healing out of his W is just so terrifying. Yep. And then you would be able to follow up with the Realm Warp as well. Sadly, Shubin not able to kite that one out. But hey, we highlighted DMO are on Soul Point. Gold still, okay, 3k gold in FPX's favor. And we have talked about scaling elements, but hey, this Cassiopeia is also large. This is also always a condition, especially with the fact we're seeing FPX's comp is running into DMO. That's where Cassiopeia thrives.
And we just saw Twilight grab himself a double kill during that fight. Sure, he got shut down by Gimgoon, but a couple more items on. Gimgoon's not going to be able to 1v1 Twilight anymore. We saw Knights 1v3 the other, uh, like a couple of weeks ago. That was against the Volibear. And he now does have the Leandri, so he's going to do much better up against Gimgoon, you know, stacking health. And the fact you have GLP as well, you're going to get the increased damage coming out as well, since, you know, he will be impaired. So the question will be about the setup for these fights now. So let's talk, because... Obviously, DMO a little bit behind in gold here, and not really ahead when it comes to scaling either. I was going to ask what the win condition is. Apparently, it's just fight for DMO. They're going in. Face Breaker, not going to do too much as UA gets into the team. Dawning Shadow across everyone, and DMO have realized they're not winning right now. They've got to back away. I'm also glad the fight happened like this. This isn't a highlight. DMO's comp is kind of weird because the fact that it all revolves around Twyla, you want the enemy to come into you. You don't want to be the ones engaging. Which sounds weird when you have a Leona, Renekton, and yeah. Callista on your team. But you know what? FBX just going to bait this fight out with the Baron, and now they get to just do whatever they want. Twyla is going to answer for one, but there's some damage coming out from Shaopung. Great CC across the team. Twyla still surviving. Flashes out to safety. Gimgoon will finish him off, but Shubin still going strong. Tian trying to get out. It's only the bot lane is left for DMO. And that was a massive ult coming out from Shaopung, setting up for Twyla and Shubin to deal all this damage. What am I witnessing right now, Lyric? This, <laughs> this is the 17th place team against the world champions. How is DMO winning? Xiao Pong, Twyla? <laughs> I mean, this fight was so chaotic. It went by so fast. We see the dredge line coming in onto the Renekton. Chris just isn't tanky at all. We do see Kimu jump in, but we're going to see a great showstopper coming out from Xiao Pong. Twyla gets on, not Twyla, Kim gets on the back line. Doesn't matter though. Twyla has so much damage at burning these frontliners from FTX as we highlighted. And Shubin was left free to just deal damage that whole fight. Dream scenario for that Callista. You see the damage from the mid laners as well. There was an ult that came out from Twyla that it only hit onto Do and B. Had that not hit Do and B, I think that's a much more convincing fight for FPX and maybe gets them the power. And I feel like those two kills at the last fight on Dragon were so massive to get him that Leandre's Torment because we're seeing how much damage he's now able to do up against Gimbu. I love that you can see when you look at the mid laners, their scores are almost identical in terms of builds where they're at. They're almost identical as well. I do want to highlight, though, that we saw in that fight, as we talked about earlier, Xiaopunk taking the big tank out of the fight, allowing Twyla and Shubin to deal all the free damage. This would be solved for DMO if they can move in and contest here. Xiaopunk flashes over the wall, gets onto Tian here, but Tian gets the dragon. No soul for DMO. It's only going to be a stun onto Chris, but this is looking good for FBX. Stunts across the team here. Xiaopunk gets onto the back line. Great phrase maker, and Shubin is dancing around the plate. LWX moving back in, though, UE. It's not so tanky anymore as Eclipse has run out. Now onto both tanks. LWX is free firing. His Jalitza can't hold everybody off. Shubin doing his very best, but he's slowed. He's stunned and he's taken down. You will fall as well. He got Shaopunk trying to be sneaky, trying to escape here. Hex flash <laughs> over the wall, but Hex flashes into his death. And there was the problem we saw with DMO, right? The other four members run to run forward, why Twyla does not. So Twyla got left in the middle of Tien and Gimgoon. Twyla went down so early on, it didn't matter now because sure, Shubin is still pretty large, does a lot of damage himself. Once Gimgu gets on him with that Q, CCs him down, FPX have more damage to win out the fight. I don't know how this is such a close, exciting game right now, but FBX just about edging it out in these fights. And let's be honest, Munchables, we came into today saying, look at these series, look at this series. <laughs> this is going to be a 20 minute game for FBX. DMO! Looking awesome. Yeah, coming out of the woodwork here. They're desperate for their second win on the standings. But unfortunately for them, it's not quite working out. FBX are going to grab themselves their second Baron of the game here. And uh, Doombi has a death cap. Yeah. Yeah. Doombi is looking pretty strong. And uh, Twyla not going to be able to grab anything more off the back of that fight. Obviously, went down right at the very start of things. It, we are getting to a point now where the scaling conversation does come into account. Oh, yeah. Because Senna, very much online. Rise, more than online at this point. And then you've got Shubin, who's really going to start to fall off. We saw towards the end of that fight. Just wasn't really doing the damage. And, I mean, I'm glad that you highlighted the Senna especially because we actually haven't talked much about LWX because I feel like he's really 
benefit from the like chaos of the skirmishes his team's been providing, not necessarily him doing some kind of like outplay and positioning. But he's still, you know, dealing a ton of damage, getting off maximum DPS his on the center. shadows are great as well. Yeah. And these clustered fights, perfect. He's involved in 15 out of the 20 kills right now. So him and Gimgoon, I feel like have really just been doing so much work in these team fights. And one of the most important things to consider with Senna as well, when we talk about scaling, it's not just down to items. The range increases with yes. the souls as well. So the longer this goes on, the safer LWX is to sit miles away from the fighter and just hammer away. And you know, we are now showing the difference in items for mid laners, so that death camp definitely going to be doing tons of work from the side of FDX. And something we're not seeing on our screen right now, Gimgoon also did finally pick up an adaptive helm, which can be extremely valuable up against Cassiopeia. So now the question is, what does FBX do next? They've still got a minute and a half on this Baron, and we already talked about it earlier. They can do excellently to set up inside of them. Yep, we do see them just doing the striking, doing high hovering in between, and doing be just putting so much pressure, forcing Twyla, and potentially even another member, as we see Chalitza constantly hovering down to make sure that doing be can't find these advantages, which is allowing for FBX to, you know, Pseudo like siege on this mid turret with the cannon. DMO looking for the miracle play here, but I'm not sure Gimgun is the best target. He's just gonna leap away and he's tanky as all hell at this point. Er, ooh. Okay, so they're gonna I expect this <laughs> because making a chain like, of noises. I, I just see TM like like ward hopping, I'm like, oh my god, is something gonna happen? Because things keep happening, much Yes. Yes, they do. And they do. always start with Tien. It always starts with Tien doing something that Or Shao Pong. Yeah, Shao Pong's been pretty proactive too. It always starts with one of our junglers doing something maybe they shouldn't. Maybe it turns out awesome anyway. But FBX are going to keep scaling. And is it sieging as well? That's just so FBX as well that they just make these things happen. Even if it's not necessarily the most optimal play, they're just going to go for the play. And I absolutely love to watch that. You can see up at the top side now, it's going to be another tier two going down as FBX continue to build this advantage. And it's interesting that they do it right now because we see Shubin and Xiaopeng's ultimates are down. So Doombi was bot side, had no TP. So this would have been a nice win where we could say, okay, everyone just five man top side, you know, killed this three man core. But a lot of the tools weren't there for them to do it. But also they wanted to reset for this dragon as well. It's up in 40 seconds. And, you know, ideally they want to take this not just because they want themselves a cloud dragon. They also want to deny the soul, but stop Elder from spawning. Elder spawning is one of the few ways that DMO have back into this game. Yeah, I agree. Because I actually feel like the soul itself at this point is not impactful at all. Yeah. Like, it really doesn't matter. It's going to come down to getting that Elder Drake up sooner, which is, you know, that always makes the game a bit of a coin toss. Exactly. And let's bear in mind, basically every dragon this game has been a 50-50 spite. So I agree, FBX. Don't let the Elder spawn. I mean, DMO has won out on a lot of those 50-50s. All right, dragon spawn in three seconds time. What do you got, Xiaopeng? This is your moment to grab yourself that soul. No, it's not. You don't have time. You're not close enough. It's gone down. FPX now on soul point as well. But importantly, they buy themselves at least 10 more minutes before Elder can spawn. Well, I mean, we see, especially on both sides of the rift, Ryze and Cassiopeia, the amount of DPS they're able to put out in such a short amount of time rival AD carries. Like, they're two, two champions that definitely stand out from any other mid lane mage in that aspect. So we reset once more as we're headed towards a 40-minute game here, Lyric, to start off our day. DMO, they're not going to let the fact that they are in 17th in the standings deter them from playing their damn hearts out. And I love to witness it. But FBX are 6,000 gold ahead at this stage. We've already said they have scaling advantages. And Baron's going to be up in a minute and a half. It feels like that's the next port of call. Yeah, it definitely is, and we're going to see Doombi go down to the bot lane because FTPF can, is going to put a lot of pressure on this inhibitor, so you're going to expect DMO to have to send two members to the ultimate bot lane. That's going to open up a potential, you know, creative play, either, you know, finding a pick in the enemy jungle or just starting up the Baron outright. I mean, knowing FBX, starting up the Baron outright is kind of their go-to play. We saw it literally at 20 minutes in this game where they're just like, hey, they don't have vision. Let's give it a go. That's the thing, too, because only one member of DMO has TP. So we expect Chalitza to answer in the bot side, but then they're either going to have to send, you know, Shao Pong or even Twyla to come answer as a two-man core. And not both of them are going to be able to get over to the Baron if FPX look for that. But FPX just abusing DMO's yeah. position in topside jungle. FPX just have the inside track in the mid lane here. They're going to be able to shift this wave under. And as we mentioned, LWX has incredibly long range. So he can poke the tower away. He managed to get a third of the tower's health there, just for free. 
Yep, and I mean, this is going to go a bit slower than we expected. Of course, there is no Baron up yet, so actually, Epics, there really is nothing to play for right yeah. now. If you need a quick nap, you've got 20 seconds. So get a couple of Zs in, come back in 20 seconds' time, Baron's going to be up. And that's when we expect Epics to really put their foot on the accelerate. Doombe has TP even if he's in the bottom side. Twyla does not, so he's got to get Slytherin over. Yep, and we just keep expecting to see this 1-4 setup that we talked about. Doombe's going to keep pressure. He's going to draw the two-man. We're going to see either this cheeky Baron play or them, you know, force the, you know, 4v3 around the Baron pit. One thing that is worth mentioning is Senna is not fast at Baron. Nobody else on the team of FPX is faster Baron. So with doing B on the bottom side of the map, they actually don't have that much Baron threat. The thing they could do though, which I've been kind of like thinking about, my mind would be really funny, is you know if doing B just does go down there, pulls two members, you know, backs off with Realm Warp, then himself TPs to the Baron, yeah. and then they have five men there. The old switcheroo. Exactly. We'll see. I don't know. I think doing B is just gonna group up with the team. FPX are the kind of team that are more than willing to just go, hey, time to 5v5. And apparently so with DMO, because they're just going to start this firing off for themselves. And they do it so fast. They certainly do. Shubin is going straight onto Gimgoon here, trying to chase the bear out of the fight. Crisp goes in, but he misses his anchor there. It's going to be tanky for now, at very least. Dawning Shadow across the team, though. The goon is here. Xiaopeng trying to play for peeling, but Twyla has already gone down, and that's a lot of the damage gone now. UE falls as Tianzin Garni and Angel Shubin desperately trying to dance around the play. Will flash out, but gets taken down eventually. And Chalitza, you know, the Croc's scary in the mid game, but not anymore. Yeah, doing we can just TP bot, and honestly, FPX can just end. We've seen it a hundred times. They don't need the Baron as soon as you give a team like FPX an advantage this late in the game. They're gonna close things out. The TP came through. It's gonna realm warp the minions underneath the towers here. And you can see. He's got enough AP. He's got himself a Sorcerer's Pot as well. He's going to burn through these towers. The rest of the squad has arrived. And I have to say, after how close this game has been, that last team fight was pretty anti climax I, I do like how FPX are in it, though, right? Because yeah. you remember how they can set up side lanes, pull multiple members down bot? They don't do any of that. They actually just completely reset. I don't know if they read thinking, huh, well, if we back off, it's going to force Demo into 